How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday morning, 11.35 a.m. here, West Coast time. September 3rd, 2025 is the date. Uh, latest activity shows a 2.8 uh, across the area around Turkey there in the green flag. Also, uh, looks like some larger movement up there north of Iceland with a 4.7. And also a 3.7 coming into the Puerto Rico area there in the red flag. Some of the latest quake activity here on the globe. Uh, let's go ahead and start off here into the Pacific Northwest. Got uh, a couple earthquakes out there around the uh, region of Washington. I was just looking at a couple of the seismograph stations. Here's the one from today there across Mount Rainier. Does look like there's a number of earthquakes out here. Some of these may be indeed ice quakes, but uh, definitely some earthquake activity out there in the mix as well. Also, I had a uh, viewer here of the channel ask me about this GPS or tilt meter monitoring station here. Appreciate the email there. Uh, showing some vertical rise here in the last week. Now, these are very small amplitude readings here, so it may look like something big's going on. But when you compare it to the, uh, the actual GPS station out here, it's in this little sequence of seasonal uplift here. It always seems like it always happens around uh, April. Here's I'm comparing it to last year here. This is a vertical displacement uh, inflation. Uh, very small, very small numbers here. Uh, about April or so, we start to go up. That's during the snow melt and whatnot. And then it goes back down here uh, towards the end of September and October in the wintertime. And then it goes back up again around April. It's Those are seasonal uh, inflationary events. I don't see anything out of the ordinary. So that tilt meter that you're seeing there on the northwestern corner of uh, Mount Rainier, even though it's showing up, those are extremely small numbers in terms of the amplitude readings there. It's just kind of matching what the GPS stations are showing, some seasonal inflation going on. But uh, as far as earthquake activity, we still have some, as I just showed you guys. And of course, that's over there at the uh, Mount Rainier volcano. Uh, Mount St. Helens, uh, I want to go back here real quick, view the current graphs, which is today, 9-3. There's at least one earthquake here. Not a whole lot uh, happening. There's some other noise out there. Hard to say if those are earthquakes or maybe some type of uh, outside interference noise. But there's definitely one earthquake here from last night. That earthquake uh, looks like... It did show up there 1.1 just before 9 o'clock local time. And again, that's over at uh, uh, Mount St. Helens here. A little bit of earthquake activity, but that's about it. Maybe another one right here as well. Uh, but these are very small quakes. So really no major uptick going on there across the uh, Cascade volcanoes for now. Just occasionally we'll see a little bit of swarming stir up there across various volcanoes, but uh, nothing big going on. Cascadia subduction zone quiet. Northern California pretty quiet as well. Uh, the Petrolia station is showing some type of activity, but that doesn't look like earthquake movement. That looks like, uh, I don't know, maybe some type of outside interference going on there. Um, I'll have to watch this station here, see if uh, it continues, and I'll have to swap out this one for something else in the area because, uh, to me, it doesn't look like earthquake activity. Philippines area, yes. Um, but look at the Bay Area. What is going on here? No earthquake activity out here. In fact, Northern California looks obsolete here. Movement. Some activity down south here, but relatively super duper quiet across the West Coast. Uh, Nevada area, some movement out there uh, yesterday and today. The latest, a 3.1 in that swarm of activity, which is now around 48 recorded earthquakes. And I'm sure there's probably double that amount. And the reason why I say that is because the earthquakes that are being published are all above 2.5. So there has to be some earthquake activity below that threshold of 2.5. That's not being reported out here. Why? I don't know. I don't run the USGS reporting page here. So I do find it a little strange that they don't want to report the smaller quakes. Uh, up in the Yellowstone National Park, a couple smaller earthquakes out there. Some around Idaho as well, around the Sawtooth Fault system this morning. A three-pointer off of the Stanley, uh, around the Stanley, Idaho area. Uh, let's double check the Yellowstone seismograph stations here and see what we have going on. Just going to double check this one. And there's the, uh, 
I believe that what was that three to four o'clock that would match this one that three-pointer there in Idaho uh, that is showing up there at Yellowstone National Park as a distant event localized events gonna be right here looks like um, not for sure what this noise is here but it looks like something turning on and then turning off could be a generator I who knows but I, I don't think it's of anything of importance there uh, a couple other earthquakes there from yesterday across Yellowstone as well, but really nothing major going on. Uh, the north, the states here, North American Plate, relatively quiet out here. Uh, just generally small microquake movement across the area today. As uh, far as newer movement goes, let's check out the Earthquake 3D Globe, see what we got today. Um, definitely some newer movement up north. Looks like it's all starting to shift down south here. Uh, some newer activity back across the Tonga Trench. Indonesia area in the Philippines, pretty active. Uh, birds are going crazy here. Uh, there's a deeper activity earthquake there around the Ecuador Trench, it looks like. 101 miles deep there into that subduction zone for a 5.3, about 8 o'clock this morning. Uh, the largest magnitude is going to be that 5.3 into the Ecuador area, underneath that region, of course. Uh, so compared to yesterday where we've seen, you know, a number of five pointers there and a bunch of fours as well today, a uh, different story, pretty quiet out there in terms of plate movement. But I don't know. It seems like every time I say that we get uh, a big earthquake coming in here. So I better watch what I say. Some further movement up there across the Aleutian Trench. It looks like this morning a 4.3. Um, Hawaii has come to a halt in terms of the eruption across Kilauea Volcano. Let me show you guys here real quick. Uh, the webcam up at the summit area shows uh, some volcanic gases going on, but it does look like the eruption has come to a halt. Episode number 32 has ended, uh, and that is the latest information here on that statement. Uh, looks like the south and middle vents are quit erupting around 8.01 p.m. last night. I knew it was getting close here because uh, we were looking at the deformation data here, and it went way it bottomed out here quite a bit and quite a bit lower than the previous level so it's depleted quite a bit and now uh, well we're going back up this is the uh, the pause right now this is the end of the eruption right here in terms of inflation uh, and we're starting to go up although not uh, not drastically up we'll continue to watch that though Let's see uh, if episode 33 comes about here in a number of days space weather activity well that was kind of a dud last well not really a dud because we did get hit with some dense plasma from that cme that was blasted off the sun there a number of days ago unfortunately the space weather conditions out here were just not favorable in terms of amping up the auroras out there across the north american side of the planet i know yesterday about this time when uh uh, people are sleeping out there across Europe and Asia area. Uh, they were really ramping up here with the auroras. But for us here along the North American side, not so much. And that has died off drastically. So therefore, no more aurora activity in the forecast for now. And looking at these sunspots here, uh, let's take a look here and see if we got anything of any interest. Still got this massive area over here that's still capable of producing some larger inflare activity, I think. But that's just about out of sight, out of mind. Uh, this image is recent. And uh, the rest of these sunspots here, pretty, uh, pretty mellow looking. Maybe this one back over here, there's a little bit of intermixing there of the polarities, the positive and negatives there, all within close proximity. That's technically, aside from this one here, this is maybe an area to watch as that is further rotating into the Earth-directed view. That's uh, going to be 4210 in area of interest. Right now, flare threat shows 55% chance for M-flare. X-flare around 15, although I think that's quite elevated. We've seen these sunspots here drop off quite quickly. Uh, so I believe that's more of a 5% chance or less for X-flare activity. No major roars there in the forecast. Beautiful moon out there, 80% illuminated there. Perfect time to bring out your zoom cam or your telescope camera and uh, get some awesome crater shots because at that angle, you can see a lot of the craters there uh, as the sun's uh, just about ready to fill up the entirety of the, uh, the surface there. But that extra angle adds some beautiful features there to picking up the craters quite nicely. 
may have to go out there tonight and see what I can come up with. Uh, let's see. Asteroid encounters. Got one coming in today. Pretty close. That's definitely within the Earth-Moon distance there. 136,000 miles. That's a newly discovered one as well. 68-foot airplane size asteroid so that's a big one kind of close but still at that distance that's uh, uh fairly safe all these other ones here millions of miles away aside from this one coming in today as well um, but much further than the uh, first one uh, storm prediction center here got a little slight risk added to the map across the beautiful state of kansas Got a little 2% chance for some tornado activity, it looks like, around Wichita. Maybe Augusta and El Dorado area as well. Beautiful region. A uh, little tornado threat. And some large hail potential out there today as well. So keep an eye on the sky for that. Uh, we do have some tropical systems here to talk about. I was just looking at this earlier. And it looks as though... Well, we got this tropical system down here south of the Baja California region. That's going to bring some rain up to Arizona. Uh, but that's going to quickly die out. But it looks like down the road here, check out what's coming into view from the uh, bottom right here. What well, looks like a big hurricane coming into the uh, Carolina area, it looks like. Uh, that is a ways out. That's around the middle of September. So we got... Uh, you know, roughly about two weeks or so before we get an idea of where this could be at. This more than likely won't play out, but with the models hinting at a possibility, then obviously that's a possibility. You know, they're not always accurate here, uh, but it is picking up on some type of big tropical system there. It's coming in from the Atlantic. It's got lots of room and moisture to pull up and eat away uh, and build into a you know, a decent sized tropical system there towards the middle of September. So we'll keep checking back on that. Also, it looks like maybe some rain out here for my neck of the woods, um, which I am completely okay with. Let's see here. Hopefully it didn't change. Uh, see, we got a little bit of rain here in Northern California. Uh, looks like a system coming in next week is going to stir up a little bit of moisture next Wednesday or so around the 10th. I hope that holds true. Because we need some rain badly out here. We've had a massive amount of fire starts out here. Uh, there's been some monsoonal moisture coming up from the south yesterday that sparked a bunch of dry thunderstorms. And uh, look at this map here. This was not like this a couple days ago. A lot of new fire starts out here across the eastern or the western edge here of the Sierra Nevada Mountains. A couple big ones out there as well. And these are the result of mainly due to lightning strikes. A bunch of little ones up here as well that sparked. Uh, even up around the uh, Forbes Town area and up above Chico. Uh, a couple newer ones out here as well, stirring up in the uh, Trinity Mountains area. Uh, not good. This is kind of our peak fire season, you know. And, and before out here, many, many years ago, we never actually had a fire season. Uh, but now it seems like th that's <laughs> something, unfortunately, that we have to look forward to out here. So everything's pretty dry. Even though we do get some rain on occasion, those thunderstorms can come in dry occasionally with gusty winds uh, and really fill the flames out here of these wildfires. Uh, so hopefully they get this under control. I did hear about some damaging um, uh, areas around the... Oh, where was it? It's in the uh, Tuol Tuolumne County area. I think it's one of these here that came through and burned a little community. Uh, either way, these are all hotspot satellite detected signatures, and those are flaring up like crazy. Um, here's a satellite imagery. That one's kind of, kind of uh, off there. It's pretty smoky. Uh, so hopefully they get everything under control out here because it's uh, not good. We do have uh, some more chances here of thunderstorms across the area today. Uh, across the Sierra Nevada mountains and up above Redding as well. Decent shot of thunderstorms up in uh, Oregon. Uh, you know, it's it's okay if we get a lot of rain there. That does help put out fires, but the lightning out there, it just, you know, it could spark things up really quickly. And you get those big fires started. Let's see, where's my windy map out here? There we go.
Got some storms already starting to fire up. Looks like around Lakeview and uh, outside Klamath Falls up north there. Uh, but this will stir up later today, I'm sure. Uh, if we look at the uh, Cape values here of the thunderstorms, you'll see throughout the afternoon it just flares up out here. This is, is the uh, potential energy that uh, is out here to produce these thunderstorms. Alturas area all throughout the Sierra Nevada mountains uh, later this afternoon and into the evening. Just going to get hammered with storms again. I don't think any of those will make it down in the valley, but you just never know. Just mainly a higher elevation uh, thunderstorm event tonight. So just keep your eyes open for smoke. Got one earthquake there on the San Andreas Fault uh, here in the last 15 minutes or so, low 1.9. Like I said, it's pretty quiet out here. There's not a whole lot happening across the West Coast for now. Uh, but that's the key word for now. And we'll continue to watch things out here. Uh, seismograph stations. That's definitely a legit earthquake there across Petrolia right now. I don't think I'd be picking up that 1.9 way down south. This is more up here. It's hard to believe that there's no earthquake activity uh, being uh, produced there. I, I really think there is, but... Uh, some of those quakes may not be reported. I think this is another area here where 2.5 and above is the uh, the key player. Anything below that, they fail to um, show earthquake activity here. I, why, I don't know. You know, t for Nevada and Yellowstone National Park, occasionally when we get swarms up here, they'll definitely show uh, some smaller quakes. And it does look like they've added some of the smaller ones here recently, but there's some areas here like Nevada and Northern California specifically that don't, it just don't choose not to show the smaller quakes, even though they're earthquakes. Southern California, though, it's, I've never seen any issues with their reporting down here. They're always reporting even the super duper small ones, like a little point five. You know, it's that's an earthquake, and it's important to see where these earthquakes are occurring because if we are still seeing earthquake activity out here in certain regions, that we need to watch the Cascadia, which I think we need to regardless. It's uh, fairly well pumped up and primed for some big movement all right have yourself a good one supposed to be around 100 degrees today here again in, uh, in northern california cooler weather coming in next week with a shot of rain so i'm i'll keep my hopes up for that enjoy your wednesday and we'll see you guys out here for the wednesday evening update take care